Hello, hello. What's going on? Give me one moment, people. I am posting some links. It's time for first light. I probably shouldn't be live streaming this in, in case something goes wrong, but that's part of what makes it exciting, right? <laughs> Anyways, it's time to start the telescope. Let me just stretch the screen here so I can get some of this miscellaneous stuff out of the way. There we go, that's better. I gotta change my output resolution. Let's see. You guys can see everything fine. YouTube's giving me a warning, but I'm just going to ignore it. Let me close this because my face is in the dark. <sighs> All right. First off, I got to open my roof. So we're going to pop the roof really quick. I'm in position 14. This is the first time that I have ever opened the roof. Let's just check the cloud sensor really quick. <laughs> Make sure everything is good. Looks like. But yeah, this is for this is first slide of the new telescope. So basically, for people who don't know, for like a year I've been working on this telescope for the southern hemisphere so I can shoot from whole new skies and a year later today now everything is set up and this is the first time i'm ever going to get to use the telescope at its location so this is basically like the james webb sending out the james webb and using it for the first time but like the amateur equivalent uh but it looks like uh the weather is good so i'm opening the roof and my roof is currently opening. Looks like it takes a second to open. What target am I viewing? Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I was, uh, I've been thinking about this for a little bit. I was either going to do, I mean, Eta Carina is kind of the most obvious thing to do. So I was probably just going to point at Eta but I might be able to do a quick shot of the Large Magellanic Cloud, but I'll probably just do Ada Carina, if I'm being honest. 
what, what do you guys think I should look at? Ada Karina seemed like the just kind of the best option. But this is my first time using it remotely ever, so there might be some troubleshooting. Maybe there's no troubleshooting. I don't really know how it's gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna figure it out real time. Alright, looks like Ada Karina is agreed upon. Um I I connected my stuff for the first time. Um like an hour ago or two hours ago, I connected everything. And this is literally my first time even opening the roof. It looks like my roof is open. My webcam isn't set up yet, so I'm currently rocking without a webcam. <laughs> but I've got two instances of SGP open because Um, I have the two cameras, so I've, I've got all the location data set up and I just have to get the, the auto guider calibrated and, uh, <laughs> I gotta figure everything else now, but this is the, the planetarium software at the moment. It looks like we're pointed around the, uh, the South Celestial Pole, which is pretty, it's pretty crazy. All right. I'm going to start looping some guide exposures. We'll see if. Oh, I need to open my flat panel. I forgot I have an OAG. Uh, yeah, they PA'd for me and everything. They, uh, they did polar alignment with the ASI air. So all that is done. It's literally, it's ready to go, apparently. We just got to open up the flat panel. Um, I sent a lot of stuff. It is a, um, so the main telescope is an FSQ 85 and it has a 6200 mm on it. And then along with this, there is a 135 millimeter lens and a 6200 MC so I can shoot Milky Way as well. The remote observatory is in Namibia. Yeah, Vela, Vela was a big one as well that I wanted to do. The 135 millimeter sits on top of everything. So let's check the all sky camera, see if it's even dark enough yet. Everyone's opening the roofs right now, but I think it's still kind of sunset. Yeah. So it's a little bit still twilight. We're going to have to wait a couple seconds.
my 6200 mm is getting the hanging downloads uh, I think I'm gonna do Vela for the first target that's the plan I'm just trying to get my camera to download photos right now because it's doing the silly hanging download thing. Oh, my camera's not even on. <laughs> That'll do it. I gotta power my camera on first, duh. All right, now my downloads should not be hanging. Hamburg, I don't even think I can see the hamburger galaxy from the where this telescope is. Okay, we got power on now. The Wi-Fi isn't super fast, and I'm finding out that Chrome Remote is not, like, the best remote program when the Wi-Fi is bad. All right, we've got at least sky background. Um, the remote desktop speeds are usable, I would say, so far. Um, it's a lot better on any desk. Chrome Remote is not very optimized I'm coming to find but um, any desk it's it's good you can see there is definitely a ping of like a second yeah the Vela Vela fits the 135 very well so <laughs> that might be the move at some point maybe later tonight I'll, I'll switch to Vela Oh, these are stars. Those aren't dust bunnies. <laughs> For some reason, I thought these were dust motes, but no, those those are stars. Hold on, we gotta get into focus here, guys. That's weird. I thought this was all in focus already, but. We'll just start racking inward here on the focuser. I, I know I can reach, I have to be able to reach focus. I just need to connect my focuser is not moving. It is, it's very far off. I guess I left it, I, I racked it all the way in or I racked it all the way out before I shipped it, I think. Yeah, okay, I racked it all the way in, it looks like, or maybe not. Maybe my focuser is broken, let's find out. It's connected. Let's say go to position 400,000. All right, looks like my little focuser needs a firmware update. First troubleshoot problem encountered. Let's boot into the Eagle software and see if this guy needs a little bit of a uh, a firmware update. Uh, the total amount for the setup is a lot. 
too much. <sighs> All right. Focuser should be on COM8. Looks like she wants to be calibrated. I'm pretty sure my focuser is all in. But I don't know. Uh, Yuri's night was cool. I might be breaking my focuser right now, but... We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, it's a it, well, whatever happens, happens, you know what I mean? Uh, it'll be a while before I think about selling time on the telescope, maybe one day, but. Anywho, while that's going, um, Let's take some photos with this. Um, my webcam isn't set up yet. Uh, I'm just kind of flying blind right now. And there is someone I could ask, but they would probably not do it until tomorrow night. And I'm kind of wanting to do this now, so. <laughs> I think they left the lens cap on on my camera lens. <laughs> I think I'm not using the camera lens tonight. Okay, the calibration is done. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm kind of freaking out right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close this. We're going to connect the focuser. Everything's fine. I should get a position now, and hopefully, it's not broken. <laughs> All right, that is definitely not moving. Okay, well, my lens cap is definitely on, <laughs> on the other thing, and the focuser is not moving.
Maybe this needed a firmware update. Yeah, these are out of focus stars, so. I did not take this wallpaper, someone else did. It's probably just needed a, a firmware update or something. Yeah, okay. The focuser still might be alive. This Prima Luce stuff is just really annoying with firmware. They update it all the time and that's probably why. I don't think I broke it. I think I would have racked it all the way inward before I shipped it out. You know, to make it like as small as possible. I don't think I would have shipped it with the focuser racked all the way out. Um, the So the second system, the one with the lens cap on is my 135 millimeter lens and uh, it does have a lens cap on. Okay, disconnect the Asado power cables and reconnect again, both cables. Click reconnect. All right. The Asado is on port two or port one. I believe it's port two, but I'm going to cycle power on both of them anyways. All right. Oh, it wants me to de disconnect the USB port as well. Okay. I don't know which USB it's on, but I'm just going to cycle all of them. That probably disconnected the mount as well, so that's going to be fun to deal with in a second. All right, reconnect. All right, USB device not recognized, hell yeah. <laughs> okay, it's connected, theoretically. Dang, she's at 33 Celsius. All right. We'll see if it lets me move outwards. All right, the focuser is moving. <laughs> We're gonna exit Eagle Play now. Close that up. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it'll it'll pick up a position now in SGP. Yeah, big big W epic moment. Or maybe it still won't show anything in SGP. I might just have to restart SGP. Because I don't think it's, this might just need to be updated. Oh yeah, okay, it's moving. 
But it's not reading its position. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, and I guess since the lens cap is still on, we can kiss the 135 millimeter lens goodnight. Good night, sweet prince. And we'll just roll with the uh, this guy for the evening. Let me just make sure my... Camera connect failed. Oh, I love QHY driver problems. It's my favorite. We'll deal with that one when we get to it. Yeah, QHY drivers, bane of my existence. Let's see if it grabs the flat box. Okay, flat box is acquired. Let's see what's our focuser position. Okay. <laughs> I'll take things that work properly for 500. I am equally as skeptical as you are. Oh, thanks. I, uh, I'm really great at framing myself for live streams, as you can tell. All right, let's get the sucker in focus. It's not supposed to be cloudy tonight. Tonight's supposed to be a pretty good night. It is actually quite clear in Namibia. No, there's no rotator on the scope. I went kind of bare bones with my setup. Mostly because I didn't want to spend uh, four grand on another night crawler. And I figured I'm just going to shoot mosaics anyways. Uh, yeah, there is an autofocus routine, but it does not work when you have giganto donuts like this. You kind of have to, you have to get it close to start with. I'm only trying to get it close enough to run a, uh, my guider calibration and then we'll slew somewhere and get things going. I could look at Tarantula. That is an option. But if I'm being real, it's a it's a Ada Karina kind of night, especially with the lens cap on. All right, at this point, I could run the autofocus routine. Um, since I think it would be interesting to autofocus on something cooler, I'm going to see the telescope to the large Magellanic cloud. And we'll autofocus on the LMC because that sounds, it'll be a, like a lot of fun. What sky quality are you working with? Um, pretty good sky quality, I would hope. It's, the telescope is located in Hakos, Namibia, close to the Gamsberg mountain, which at one point was the observing site one of the potential observing sites for the, uh, whatchamacallit, the VLT. I 
I think my donuts are still too big. Yeah, my donuts are still too big. We're so close. Uh, Bortle zero. Darker than anywhere I've ever been before in real life. Like this is pretty much as close as you can get to uh, pure untainted skies. It's actually the uh, it's the darkest observatory on the planet, so it should be good skies, I think, you know, being the darkest. Oh, I'm just off of the LMC. That's so cruel. <laughs> I'm going to try and slew it like slightly downward. I'm going to click slew here. Uh, oh, I need to solve and sync once. Okay. We'll try a plate solve and then... Uh, yes, Lucas, you are, you are done. I'm going to be looking for everything. Nothing is safe. Does anyone know the NGC number for the Magellanic Cloud, or sorry, the Tarantula Nebula? NGC 2070, it looks like. Uh, no, there is no SQM reader. I think there's one at a neighboring farm. Uh, yes, part of the whole purpose of this telescope is to uh, search for undiscovered objects, so that's going to be one of its primary goals. Clearly, I need to work on my pointing. Uh, yes, eventually I will make pretty pictures of known objects, but the uh, that will kind of happen in tandem with the discovery efforts and probably, uh, ooh, there we go. <laughs> there is your Magellanic Cloud. Uh, but probably mostly during the full moon, I'll just be doing narrowband of known things. Current filter is the loom filter, but that's the Magellanic Cloud. Uh, how many hours am I planning on an area before I move over? Uh, conservatively, two to three hours, I think, is what the plan is. And that's kind of the function of the 135 millimeter system is I can like canvas a big spot in the sky really fast at F2 and just move along. But yeah, the sky here is uh, very freakishly dark. I might need to change my autofocus step settings around. I don't know if it saved them or not. We'll see. But after this, we're going to go to Vela, I think. Oh, which is exciting. What is your PC spec? I have an Eagle 4 Pro on this, so.
It's like, it's pretty good. Uh, the altitude of the observatory, I think it's like 4,500 feet. Yeah, I think I need to really up my steps. I don't think it actually saved the info. Yeah, and before Windows Update, for real. Uh, yes, Alex, that's right. It's moving the focuser in and out, and it's measuring how blurry it is at each position. Uh, yeah, a new camera could make a big, a big difference, I think. The, uh, the 400D is pretty dated, but certainly still usable. Yeah, we're going to up our step size really quick here, because this is clearly not enough. I don't think it remembered it from when I set it up. Oh, I had this at bin two by two. Step size 10, yeah. The t <laughs> I think this should be like 1600. Uh, yeah. And we should be auto-focusing like every 45 minutes and on a filter change. <laughs> yeah, I definitely forgot some things. All right, let's try that again. Yeah, the 600D is pretty nice. That was the camera I started out with. Uh, no, I don't have filter offsets. I haven't measured them. They're pretty negligible with the, uh, with the Antlias, I think. So I'll just refocus. All right, that looks like a more competent V curve. <laughs> Could probably take it a bit further. It's funny, I thought I had all this set up. I configured all of this in Texas, but I don't know, maybe it just disappeared, but Uh, a good telescope for just looking at stars would be an 8-inch Dobsonian. That would be the play. How old am I? I'm 25. I'm gonna WhatsApp Friedhelm really quick and see if you can take the lens cap off. Friedhelm's busy um, with guests at the farm tonight, so I don't think he's going to be able to 
put, take my lens cap off, but I just messaged him in case he could. Yeah, we want a bit more step size. Six, four, nine, seven, five, six. Let's see. We'll go to six, four, nine, seven, five, six. And I'm just going to modify my step size again. We'll go 3,000. And we'll run it. Uh, yeah, most of my searching efforts are 03. I don't know if I broke the world record for youngest. Um, I think Akarsh Mishra, Mr. Deep Sky on Instagram, might actually be younger than me. But that's a good question. <laughs> I'll have to see how old Akarsh was when he, he did his discovery with his friends, but I think I think we might actually be like the same age. Oh yeah, this is this is a good V curve. I think we've uh we've done it. There's someone else who's eighteen. Oh yeah, I figured I probably wouldn't be the youngest. Um, I don't know if Sulfur 2 is practical. It might be. It's certainly more limited, but, I mean, you never know. I mean, wherever people aren't looking, there's certainly potential for anything. All right, before we go calibrate the guider, I'm just going to take, like, a 30-second exposure <laughs> just for fun because I want to see the large Magellanic Cloud. And then we'll go calibrate the guider and then we'll go off to Vela. Uh, yeah, this is it's certainly a financial challenge, but it's the cost of doing business. Who knows what could happen with this, but damn. Uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty dark. <laughs> it's pretty dark there. <laughs> Jeez. Jesus. Bruh. That's just, that's heavy. That's heavy, man. Is this, is this an emotional moment for me? I think this counts. Oh, you know it's a write-off. I, <laughs> you're, uh, I'm way ahead of you on the write-off. We're gonna, I'm gonna save this file really quick. Oh, actually, I made a Dropbox folder just for it. It was called Namibia Active Imaging. Yeah, is this a core memory? I think this is a core memory. That's pretty ridiculous. I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to calibrate my auto guider. <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to be careful with the overexposure. All right. We're gonna go calibrate. Hey, Lynn, yeah. come look, come look, come look, come look. Oh, I could go look at Orion. Maybe. <laughs> 
Man, that's kind of stupid. Orion is upside down. All right, we'll go over here. I have to figure out how to get my QHY camera to connect. Thanks, QHY. Come, come look at this. Pretty crazy. Uh, I'm using a, uh, a CEM70. So there's no encoders, but it does have the, uh, like, the home switch on it. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you for how to connect a QHY camera. Bruh. <laughs> yeah, this is a single exposure. All right. Very briefly here, I need to disconnect all my USB devices and reconnect them because this thing is being really dumb. Yeah, the, the single exposure looks like a two hour integration, it's stupid. All right, QHY. I've had enough of this QHY. Yeah, I uh, I did a physical disconnect via the. Actually, you know, what? I don't know what port they have it plugged in on. I might it might actually be riding on the camera port. Oh, I might have to disconnect the camera. Hold on, I have to look at a picture Friedhelm sent me of the scope, and I need to see where this thing is connected to. Oh, hell yeah. Friedhelm's taking the thing off in 10 minutes. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Now I just have to figure out if I can get this connected before he walks over there. Should I keep hitting the button over and over again? I forgot, I was checking a photo. It looks like, um... This is connected to one of the Eagle ports on this side. Maybe I just have to let it stay off for a couple seconds. Uh, did I see the new ZWO telescope? Yeah, I saw I saw the photos of it. Looks interesting. It's exciting to uh, to see some new innovations, some new products. If I trust anyone to make like a Veonis style telescope like one of those bougie ones, I would want ZWO to do it and then charge like $500 for it and just absolutely destroy those overpriced alternatives. So I'm kind of excited to see that happen because, oh, let's go, we're connected. Let's go. Oh, we got a nice guy star. 
Did I mention I focused the OAG at home? Okay. While that's going, I'm gonna pull up, we're gonna pull up our first photo. Which is under Namibia Active Imaging. Although I don't know if it's set to sync. I think I need to, oh, I have Dropbox sync paused. Um, I'm going to wait on this because it's, it's going to tank my Wi-Fi. There's a bunch of stuff waiting to sync on my Dropbox and I really don't want it to. And if, if I try and boot this, it's going to freak out at me. I just know it. Maybe I just need to click on this and say make online only on everything because I really don't want it to sync. All right, the mount is alive. Looks like we are auto guiding. It's time to get serious. <laughs> it's time to take a photo. Let's, let's boot up SGP here and get, get going. We're gonna do Vela. Uh, filter, I'm just going to do RGB for tonight. At least for the, uh, for the front half of the night and then probably switch to narrowband later on. Yeah, I have a wide field set up as well, but Friedhelm left the lens cap on and he's gonna take it off in a second. SGP is crashing at the moment. Yeah, I think SGP has lost its absolute mind at this. You're about to get task manager, buddy. Let's see, my step size was 3,000, I think. Oh, can't open focuser on COM8. It was really just a bug. Well, all my USB devices are connected, so. Yeah, I like the I like the ZWO stuff too. Um, if I was to get another 455 camera, I'd probably get a Moravian. If I like had infinite budget, that would be the play. Okay, let's see, remembered my gain. Let's make sure it remembers our autofocus. If you wanted bin two by two with the step size of 3000. And we autofocus every 45 minutes. And autofocus on a filter change. 
And just so I don't do that to myself again, let's see, I want my profile as Hakos and reporting files to here. I'm just gonna save this profile again really quick. And we'll get everything connected. And then I'm gonna frame up Vela. Uh, SGP versus Nina, they're the same. I like both. I see in the future that I'll probably need to switch to Nina because they have a more active developer ecosystem. And I think SGP is like just one guy. So I'll have to switch one day. But the one thing I really like about SGP is how simple it is to configure start and end times. Um, so for now, I will use that until there's a new feature that comes into Nina that makes me really want to switch. And for now, I haven't really had a feature that really makes me want to move programs. So I'm going to be using SGP still. So yeah, one day I'll switch to Nina just because they're gonna develop some stuff that's way better. Yeah, I know Nina has the advanced sequencer, but like I don't really wanna spend a bunch of time learning an advanced sequencer when like I can already, I can do everything I need to in this program and I'm not gonna spend the time to relearn another one until I absolutely need to. And I don't need to yet. All right. Oh, this is gonna be so great. Ah, oh, Vela. Yeah, the one nice thing is you don't have to pay for Nina, which is probably the best part. <laughs> See, like, this is why I like SGP. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna set my planning tools, and then I'm just gonna click the thing, and it's gonna just work, you know what I mean? I can just go boop and then boop and it's gonna it's gonna remember all my stuff. I know I have how many hours to image this. I have we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got seven hours left, which means we're rocking like two hours per filter. We'll go RGB and we'll do two hours of five minute exposures here which should equal about 24 five minute subs per filter. And that should cover us for a cute little first light image tonight. And yeah, we'll cool to negative 10. It's pretty hot out there right now because it's still summer, I think. Yeah, I'll, I will have to learn it one day. I know this, but today is not that day, dang it. Hopefully in a second here, I will get a WhatsApp from Friedhelm and then we'll uh, we'll get the wide field rig going too. Um, I'm just doing a first light. I don't really, I just wanna get the colors. I don't really care about anything else. Uh, excuse me, autofocus. All right, the autofocus is timing out.
There are stars in the OAG. I just have to wait for this to stop timing out, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's piggybacked. Uh, yeah, the specs for the setup. Um, just so everyone knows where they can find the complete list as well for everything, it's also uh, here on my website in my gear. I have it listed. Every All the specifics, well, most of the specifics are listed here. The location, the guide, setup, the flattener, the cameras, everything else on uh, my website and my gear. Uh, Orion goes through Zenith, where my telescope is located. All right, it looks like this wants to get end tasked again. Yeah, this is going to get end tasked. Every second that goes by, we get closer and closer to switching to Nina. I know you Nina fanatics out there are watching this and uh, cringing. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> the options are going to be a lot, a lot nicer for shooting. We'll have a uh, Milky Way core goes directly overhead, large Magellanic clouds. It's going to be pretty, pretty sweet. Let's make sure this focuser is actually Did it rack itself all the way in? Bruh. Okay, so the Prima Luce focuser is not not happy about life. Briefly, I'm going to I'm going to do this whole disconnect thing again. This is how you guys know that uh this is definitely the first light because <laughs> I am certainly troubleshooting. We're doing it live. Okay. We are potentially going to need to recalibrate the focuser again. I know it's pretty close to being racked out this time, though, because... Uh, hold up. The QHY camera doesn't want to connect again. Yeah, it, it would be too easy if I was able to just simply use my observatory. I must suffer first. I'll just disconnect all the USBs and give it another 30 seconds. It seems like they need a couple seconds to like refresh. Ah. Friedhelm tells me the lens is now open. Let's uh let's tackle the eagle focuser first or the the prima luce and then we'll see what kind of troubleshooting lies ahead on the lens system. Yeah, that that wants to be recalibrated. Okay.
QHY camera's back. Let's see if we have guide stars or not. We have guide stars and they're in focus. That means the focuser didn't move. So we know the focuser is close to being racked out all the way because of the fact that that is true. Okay. Let's check the advanced settings for the focuser. This is all functional. Let's see what's happening on here. This reads a good focuser position. It seems to me like I might just need to be updating the ASCOM driver at some point. Let's see if I can move this in millimeter steps. We'll go 0.2 millimeters one way. Okay. And we'll go 0.2 millimeters back the other way. That confirms to me the focuser is not broken and it's just a driver issue. Now I will close this out. I'm just speaking out my, uh, my troubleshooting thought process in real time. Hopefully it's entertaining in some way. See here, there's no read on position. This is using the PLL focuser driver. I believe that's the only one. I'll refresh this list and reselect COM8. Select, we'll do a reconnect. If not, another SGP reboot would probably fix it. Oh, you know what it's going to be? I have to, okay, yeah, that fixed it. It's too easy, too easy. Let's just hope it saved all of my profile settings that I configured. And very briefly, we're going to reconnect everything and we are going to set this up for Vela again. I'm already pointing at Vela. I'm just going to uh, get my pointing set. So we'll go tools, framing and mosaic wizard. I already forgot the NGC number. No, sorry, Ada Karina, I'm not doing Vela. Sorry, I keep forgetting the names of things. This is the first time I've imaged from the Southern Hemisphere in like six months. <laughs> so I'm a little rusty. I don't think this remembers my pointing angle either, so we'll just get it centered. Like there, and then we'll uh, we'll trust the pointing angle. Once I do a solve and sync, it should update that and be accurate. Uh, the FOV, I don't know the exact FOV. The focal length is 450 millimeters and it's got a full frame on it. I'm probably gonna clip on Vela. Sorry, Ada Karina. Someone needs to slap me in the face every time I call it the wrong nebula. Okay, run sequence. We're learning the quirks together. Every system's a little weird. Now I should briefly run another autofocus and it did remember my step size, so that's really cool. Yeah, we'll see how the first sub looks and if it looks okay, I'll just decorate or I'll deprecate a couple exposures and add some short ones and I'll, I'll do a HDR if that's what it comes to.
I love how PhD freaks out when it's not even auto guiding. <laughs> All right, we got a good V-curve. Failed to validate position. Interesting. Bad plate solve, it looks like. Might have to switch to plate solve too, but we'll see. I'll see if it can even just plate solve this in general. It looks like it's on the Southern Pleiades or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm. it's close, but it's like just a little bit off. I think I've got plate solve two configured. We'll see if we can uh Do I have plate solve two? That's a good question. Huh 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 huh. Good good question. I'll switch it back to Aztap and we'll I'll home and then slew back. Um, but I'll give it like a solve and sync blind and we'll see if it works. Should probably have blind solve failover turned on. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. The The reason I'm using an OAG is because I'm piggybacking the other thing and I couldn't afford the flexure, you know what I mean? Like, I can't triple piggyback. Uh, yeah, I'm testing Murphy's Law right now. It's a, it's a great old time. Where is my telescope pointed? Okay, it is definitely, okay, the telescope is synchronized. It should theoretically know that it's on the Southern Pleiades right now. That is so pretty though. That's, I'm gonna have to go back and shoot that at some point. Let's see if it'll plate solve this time. Since it, it blind solved, I think it should know where it is. Oh yeah, there we go. Blind solve failover was the play, clearly. But it's also not plate solving that. Interesting. I might be blind solving literally everywhere. But maybe I'll get plate solve to set up on this. Or maybe it's my, my image scale might be a bit off. That might be why it's freaking out. I know I should be at 450 millimeters and I probably just have the pixel size wrong. It's 376 for the IMX 455, which, oh yeah, 1.71. My image scale is off. That's the problem. I'm going to abort this really quick. Silly me, this is not the right image scale. Oh, I'm actually pretty close. 
but that small difference might actually become a factor. So I'm just going to save it. I thought I had it as two arc seconds per pixel for some reason. But we'll see how it behaves now on the plate solve. It should be a very easy image for it to solve. Huh, yeah, it just doesn't. I guess we will let it do the blind solve failover. While that is working through its blind solve nightmare, I'm going to start exposing with the camera lens system. We'll see if we can see some stars. Let's give it an output directory here. This should be, yep, ASI camera two. Blah, blah, blah. I don't think we need to let this have a telescope for now. It's just riding blind. We'll take a 10 second exposure, see what happens. Oh, it looks like I am integrating. Integrating on Ada Karina. Let's see how our guiding is doing too. It looks like my guiding is pretty freaking good at the moment. I guess TSA was very gentle with my CEM-70. <laughs> oh yeah, we're we're really in business now. No more no more messing around. Oh yeah, oh yeah, here we go. We got the 135 going now too. This is a, this is epic. Yeah, my, my CM70 normally is not that good. <laughs> I don't know why it's guiding this well. If I'm being completely honest with you, this guide's better than my Paramount. Yeah, this, this is messed up guiding. Oh, this this even has the, the settings from my uh, HEM. It has my uh, predictive peck guiding on, which I don't even know if that's going to be the best guiding, but it, dang it, it's got predictive peck, I guess. Definitely looks like there's a bit of uh, backlash on the deck, but you know, we'll live with that. So this this system here on the wide angle lens, this has an, oh, oh dang. This has an ALPT uh, dual band filter in it. So it is doing narrowband perpetually. My first sub is about to come in on the 85. All 
I wonder if my focal length is right. Yeah, 450, huh. <sighs> yeah, I guess the CM70 is just crushing it right now. That's pretty cool. It looks like my step size also was reset on this wide angle system. We're gonna have to set that up again too. Been two by two. I believe my step size is like 120, but I, I'm honestly not sure. I'll autofocus every 45 minutes. All right, we'll let it rip. All right, first subframe coming in. Seven more seconds. Pretty sick. <laughs> That's so good. All right, you think we clipped? Oh, I don't think we clipped. <laughs> There's no way. I'm turn off the auto stretch and see. Oh, we did not clip. I mean, I think I clipped that star pretty bad, but we are not clipped. That's pretty ridiculous. Let's check up on this autofocus while that goes. All right, we should be in focus on the wide system now. Let's grab us a quick, I'm just gonna take a simple frame and focus exposure here. I have my system set up for four minute long exposures, so we'll let that go for four minutes. And this one's gonna go for five minutes. And my auto guiding is still pretty bananas. All right, well, that wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> First time, it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. We had some camera connection problems, uh, to be sure. Um, oh, I need, to, I need to turn the cooler on on my other camera. Hold up. It is currently like 90 degrees there, I think. So this definitely needs to be cooled. Yeah, yeah. That exposure is going to be noisy as heck, but... Yeah, that went surprisingly well. It only took like a year, a year of planning, and... Uh, yeah, pretty much a whole year. I had this idea last... April, almost on the dot last April. And I got my, I got the wide angle camera first and then <laughs> slowly built everything up. I had my CM70 already and man, 
It took a while. It definitely took a while. But. Yeah, a lot of hard work. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty stressful shipping it out. It cost a lot, a lot of money to ship out. Like, it hurts. It hurts, but um, it's all worth it now because who knows? Who knows what we'll discover? The southern hemisphere is free real estate at the moment, so. Who knows what we'll find or what will show itself to us. It's a, uh, it's an exciting time to be sure. It's good to have, it's good to have a permanent presence in the South. Definitely. It's a, uh, it's long overdue as well. The insurance actually wasn't bad. The insurance was only like $150. Um, what was bad was the bat import tax to Namibia. That was bad. You know, I'm probably going to have to use Nina to synchronize my dithers. Yeah, that's probably going to be why I have to switch to Nina. I'm just not realizing. Because <laughs> this exposure is about to be trailed. Oh, yeah, there's going to be... There's a lot. There's definitely a lot of stuff out there. This isn't my first time imaging the uh, the Carina Nebula, though. I'm excited to uh, to do something else as well. Dang! So here's the uh, there's the 135 millimeter system at work. There's no way that this isn't clipped. Oh, it actually might not be clipped. Huh, yeah, it's barely, barely acceptable. So I think I'll have some HA to go along with this image too, and I'll also have some O3. See, I should be able to do um, about 70 of these. And I believe I need to set this up to not have an auto guider. There's no auto guider. We'll have no plate solver. It'll have its focuser. And that should be everything I need. Um, oh, I need to turn off the meridian flip. No meridian flip, because I'm running this in piggyback mode. Um, sequence. Or event park enabled. Let's see, I need to turn off park telescope. All right, now I should be able to just let this run in tandem. No guider, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I would like to continue, cool it down. It's just gonna do another autofocus, which is fine by me. And we'll go back to the interesting stuff. 
Uh, yeah, I think I am going to have some dithering issues with that, but um, that's a problem for me to figure out later. <laughs> I'll be taking 70 subs, and I think I'll just uh, delay my dither amount and my dither time. We'll switch it from high dither to medium di dither, and we'll do it every fourth frame. And that should mitigate any problems with that. But it's finally done. It is in focus. Everything works. Let's download that uh, that LMC file to look at. I think it's living in the imaging folder, uh, frame and focus. I think this is the, uh, that's the image from the other thing. I'll open one of the Ada photos. It might take a year to download. Their Wi-Fi is not that great. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to arrange for the file transfers in the morning, or rather at 11 p.m. tonight because this is on the other side of the planet, and it's currently 11 or noon where I'm at. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I talked to them about Starlink. They, um, It's not officially available in Namibia yet, but I think for some special cases it is available in Namibia, but it's not like general population yet. I told them they should reach out and get Starlink because it's cheaper and it's going to be way better. So that actually might happen this year. If SpaceX even cares about features. <laughs> All right, let's watch my auto guiding. <laughs> I know everyone loves watching PhD graphs, and this one's a really good one. 0.27. You guys think the seeing there is good? I think it might be really good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm honestly I'm really confused because my CEM70 has never guided this well. It's just all of a sudden deciding it's going to be really great. Is the 40 good?
Don't be ashamed of your guiding. I'm sure it's okay. No, there's no uh, there's no rotators on any part of my rig. It's a lot of HA, man. Also, probably a lot of O3. <laughs> you're on a dob on a platform you don't want to hear about guiding i uh i'm sorry for your for your platform dob i wish i uh i wish i had a rotator right now so i could get the gabriel mistral but it's okay <laughs> i think i will live with this as it is You might just have to tune the worm gears on your uh, on your EQ6. It's not a bad process. Let's check their all sky camera because I think their all sky camera is really dirty right now. So you might not, yeah. <laughs> their all sky camera is covered in a lot of dust, so you can't really get a judge for the uh, the sky quality, but it's good. You'll have to believe me that it's good. Apparently it gets pretty windy here though. That's the uh, that's the one complaint that people have. Uh, the average number of clear nights is about 300. 280 to 300. Banana slug. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a premier location for sure. The ESA was, uh, or the ESO was going to potentially put the VLT where this is. That's how good it is. It's like 2% worse than Chile by number of clear nights. So it's basically Chile. No, I don't know Mr. Who's the Boss is. Oh, interesting. I'm going to look up his YouTube right now. Uh, yes, he is a pretty big YouTuber. Which video is it? Oh, the Samsung moon faking one? 
That's so weird. Actually, I was watching this video, but I didn't watch the whole thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold up. <laughs> I was watching this video, but I didn't finish it. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's really cool, actually. Yeah, I'm coming with you. All right, how long have I been live? I'm honestly kind of hungry because I've waited uh, all morning. Looks like I've been on for almost two hours. <laughs> Yeah, it's really nice here in Salt Lake. It's like 70 out today, and it's been freezing and snowy for the last couple weeks. So it's time to go outside, I think. <laughs> I think I've done enough work for today or the last six months to make this happen. So I'm going to sign off and eat some food because I'm starving and... Yes, I hope I've I've uh <laughs> I've made you all proud. The uh things are changing. Things are going to get better. We're going to we're going to be discovering some new things. And I'm really excited for uh for what lies ahead for this this whole system. It's going to be good. Exciting times. I hope I can live stream more of this <laughs> soon, but there may come a point in the near future where I can't live stream because I'm going to be imaging stuff that I don't want to share. So if I ever stop live streaming, you'll know something's been found. You came back just in time for me to leave, Larstronomy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alrighty. Hope y'all have, have a good one. I'm uh I'm gonna go have a good day now. See y'all uh maybe tomorrow. I don't know if it's clear tomorrow, but I might catch you all tomorrow again. But I'll see ya.